welcome back to the IB Investor channel. In this video, we'll go through the company Tomra, which is the first Norwegian company on this channel. We'll cover a short introduction of the company, the share price development, the sales and profitability, the cash flows, the debt situation, the valuation, and the dividend. Tomra was founded on an innovation for the return of empty beverage containers in 1972 in Norway, in a small shed in Asker. The brothers Petter and Tore Planke created a solution to a problem. A local grocer wanted a machine that could handle and easily take care and take back uh, empty bottles and deliver a deposit refund receipt. This was the beginning of Tomra. Now the company has a market cap of 27.3 billion uh, Norwegian kroners. Uh, it currently trades on the Oslo Bush. The ticker symbol is TOM, T-O-M. The industry is energy and recycling. And the owner is currently Latour that holds roughly 21% of the capital. Now for the share price development here and we can see that it's been a pretty bumpy ride here i don't know so much about history here what happened or what was going on but at least here for the most you know recent period at least from 2015 or so we can see that the share price has been on a very fast growth pace here topping here 322 norwegian kroners here in at the end of 2021 However, the stock has come down some 21% or so from the all-time high here to the current level, just below 100 Norwegian kroners here. So quite a big steep here. And we can also see here the total return for the different periods here. So the total return here in this case includes the dividends reinvested back into the stock here. So we can see at least for the 10-year period, the stock has done very well for itself by almost 300% here for the 10-year period. However, if you own the, shop, uh, the stock for a shorter period, as we can see here, you're most likely in the reds as there has been some massive declines here as of late. We can also see that currently at my broker Avanza, the stock is currently owned by 7,871 shareholders right now. Now for the income statement of this company, we'll start with the blue line here, which is the net sales, which we can see has developed pretty well over the years. There hasn't really been any declines here, but rather there has been, you know, growth for the whole period going up and up which is very good to see we can also see here in orange the eps development here or earnings per share if you will there has been some declines for some off years here but overall the trend is going up and we can see here though for the past two years and most recent quarter in 2022 the eps has been on a decline here so 0.4 Norwegian kroner is less here comparing it to 2021 here so not so good however if we check the cross margin here we can see that the company sits at a very healthy 42 to 43 percent uh, gross margin which is very good for an industry company so you know management has done a well a good job here you know to keep and defending here the margins here at the high level for many years and especially the gross margin here hasn't been going up and down so much but rather has been sitting comfortably here at 42 to 43 percent bracket here which is good now for the profit margin here that currently sits at 6.9 percent there has there has been higher period here for example in 2021 they posted a 10 percent profit margin here so much lower uh, in today's market here at 6.9%. So the 10% here that they achieved was much higher than in that case. They have also achieved it in 2016 here at roughly 10.5% here. So much higher here than comparing it today. So in the past, they've had the possibility to, you know, have even higher margins. So management, you know, they could do something here. Uh, and obviously, a declining profit margin here doesn't look good and that probably explains why the EPS here is lower as well for the period. Now for the free cash flow margin and we can see that in the past they have posted a you know double digit lower teens number here for for some years there has been some years where it's been very low and even negative and we can see here in the most recent quarter here for the rolling 12 months that it's also been negative here which is not very good however in 2022 they did have a small free cash flow uh, free cash flow margin at least but but this makes it very difficult for us as an investor and so spe uh, speculators on on the sideline you know 
to value the company because you know we need some sort of sustained you know free cash flow margin here to make some assessments going forward so this is pretty tough for us to to actually make an assessment where this is going because as it looks right now it might as well just keep going here on, on a negative streak here but but obviously management has to drive up these uh, free cash flow margins now for the free cash flow per share in, in Norwegian kroners, it paints pretty much the same picture as the previous picture. So a decline here and obviously a negative number here for the free cash flow per share. And we can also see that the company currently trades at a negative 0.85% free, uh, free cash flow yield, which is not very good, but we're not going to dwell further on this. Now for a more optimistic view here. So now we're looking at the number of shares here in the company in millions. And we can see for the past 10 years at least, there's not been any dilutions here at all. So that's very good to see that management isn't doing any purchases of acquisitions or something like this with shares. So, you know, it's a good figure. It's not moving up at least. And it looks like they're not doing any buybacks here either that makes any impacts at least. So since we're looking at the millions here in shares, so. But yeah. Now for the cash flow overview, when we first check the uh, cash from operations here in blue, that has been growing pretty nicely over time up until 2021 here, where we saw a decline here for two years in a row, which is not very good to see. We can also see that the company has posted some free cash flows up and down. And here they had a pretty strong period here from 2019 to 2021 in terms of uh, free cash flow here but also now recently it's been on decline. And for the investing side of the business, they've been pretty conservative here, but here they made a lot of investments and then it's gone back a little bit and now they're doing some investments again. So obviously hurting the free cash flow here, but uh, this is what worries me the most that the cash from operations is quite low. It's on, on the decline here for a trend here for two years. So this number certainly has to go up here in the coming years. And we're gonna see on the next page here, how it affects the net debt as well. Now for the net debt versus the cash from operations, and we can see here in the blue line, we see the net debt uh, increasing ever so slightly here for the first few years, but certainly here it picked up a lot here. So almost doubling here from one year to the next, and obviously here doubling here from one year to the next. So there has been pretty high net debt uh, acquisition here. So that's not so good to see, especially not since the cash from operations here in orange are on the decline as we described on the previous page here. So this is not good when the gap is increasing here. And here it certainly is increasing here. So we can see that it would take roughly 6.9 years to cover all the net debt here with the cash from operations if they wouldn't acquire any further debt and just you know remain at this level for uh, cash from operations so we need to see the cash from operations increasing a lot now in the coming quarters as well as we have to see that the net debt are coming down to more you know normal levels if you will because for some reason here they acquired a lot of net debt here uh, now for the net debt to EBTA, and we can see here, which is also supported from the previous page, that the multiple has gone up here to 2.6 times, so much higher than the past periods here. There has been a period where it's, you know, been below one times, which is very good, but, you know, there has also been some periods here where we can see in the most recent time where it's been above one times. But a 2.6 times multiple, in a sense, is not so bad but uh, we're gonna have to see what the management are doing with this number going forwards, because if it's reaching three, 3.5 or four times, then it's quite alarming. So it's gonna be very interesting here from the sideline, at least to see how this number is gonna develop here in the coming quarters. And also comparing it to some of Latour's portfolio companies here. So Asabloy currently sits at a similar 2.6 times multiple here, and also Truex here at a 0.49 times uh, net to EBITDA multiple here, so much lower. Now for the enterprise value uh, to EBIT, and we can see that the company has come down a lot in value here. So currently trades at a roughly t uh, 22 times multiple here, which is almost that of uh, uh, 2019, where it was 44 times. So 
you know, the company has come down a lot here in terms of valuation, which is good to see. But, you know, currently a 22 times multiple for this company is still pretty high, I would say. I mean, we have seen that this company, historically speaking, has been at a much lower multiple. And I would, you know, say just from a valuation standpoint concerning this company that, you know, it would be much better if the company would trade around these levels because these would probably offer a much better value proposition than today but obviously looking back here a few year a few years sorry uh the valuation has come down a lot so it's certainly much better value proposition today compared to just you know one two three or four years ago here and also comparing it to Sabloy that sits at a 16 times multiple which is lower obviously than tomra and then we have true here at 23.6 which is actually which is actually higher here than uh, comparing it to Tomra right now. I apologize here for the business slide, but here on the left side, we have the return on invested capital here. So here we can see that management currently has a 8.7% uh, return on invested capital, which is quite low, even for industry standards, I would say. So they have to get back at these, you know, lower teens level, you know, 11, 12, 13%. They have been as high as 15% here in the past. So management has to allocate capital better in the future here and drive up this number because this is quite a low number i would say looking at the return of equity it pretty much paints the same story here it's been on the, the decline here for some years now for two years in a row which pretty much paints the same picture all over this place in terms of this company so you know management has some work here to do to improve these figures especially since we have seen that they have been able to you know produce much better and higher numbers here uh, in the past, and these numbers just support the uh, the statements uh, stated previously here on, on previous slides here. So management have to improve here, especially for the capital allocation here. Now for the dividend side of the business. So here we can see on the left side here the dividend per share in terms of Norwegian kroners here. And we can see that the development has been pretty nice. It's gone up each and every year even during the you know 2019 which is the covid year here that they paid out in 2020 we can see that you know ever so slightly they have increased it year after year and also it looks like they had some perhaps perhaps a special dividends here uh, that the board decided to pay out so it looks really strong here from a dividend point of view that you know very sustainable you know very very good levels in terms of you know the growth which i really like so you know, for the dividend guys, this is probably, you know, a good sign for them at least. But now looking at the yields here, we can see that the company for some levels here did trade at a massive overvaluation, in my opinion. And this often supports it with a low dividend yield here. So we can see that during 2019, 2020, when the EBIT to EBIT multiple probably reached that of, you know, 44 times or something like this. That's the period where also the dividend yield was very, very low here. But now seeing the company trading at somewhere around 2% yield is obviously a much better value proposition today compared to just a few years ago. But we can see in the past that, you know, it has traded at roughly, you know, 20% uh, higher dividend yields comparing that of today. So even in the past, there has been cases where you could argue that the company should go down even further just to offer a better dividend yield here for, for investors or speculators wanting to invest in this company. Now this is it for this video. Uh, I thought it was quite interesting just to review a company outside of Sweden for once. It was some time ago. And uh, especially since this company is owned by Latour, and Latour is one of the you know more commonly owned companies or shares here in Sweden to own. So quite interesting company overall. And I certainly think that this company has the trends with it, with all the recycling business and so on, you know, for for bottling and, and whatever. So you know, super excited about the future for this company. I don't currently own it, but uh, the valuations has come down. So I think maybe if the valuations would come down further, it might be interesting to look at here. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Bye-bye.